What's up gamers, Faros here back in the Playbook series today talking about the red zone. Stop settling for field goals, start scoring touchdowns. Here are five concepts you're gonna be able to find in any playbook. These aren't one-off hit plays that you know will get patched or whatever. These are real authentic ways I like to score in the red zone. So first things first, I like to use balanced sets down when I get close. Another thing, pro tip real fast, L trigger. Click in on the left stick and you can move the ball wherever you want. So if you want to practice two-point conversion plays, if you want to practice three-yard line, an eight-yard line. I like to think of the red zone in Madden anywhere inside the 10. Um, it gets pretty tough at the eight to score. Anytime I'm at the eight, my personal strategy is to try and get down to inside the three or four because it opens up a lot of things we're about to talk about. So if you're at the eight, don't feel free to run it. Like if it's first and goal from the eight, try and get down inside the three or the four so you can open up so many more plays. Your opponent has to respect the run game so much more. That'd be my first kind of tip. But as far as the plays go, coming out in a spread set, something open, honest, keeps them um, balanced. You can then simply scramble in with the quarterback. That is my first tip. It's the number one thing I like to do in the red zone. It's why I use a mobile QB. It's why I use these spread sets. It's why I do everything I do. So I really like to just drop back, tap our trigger, find the lane, and get in. Now, there's a couple issues with this, this thing. You can really only do it from, like, the 4 and in, the 5 and in. That's why I try and get to that part of the field. But also, you can't really slide. Like, if you start running and you're going to take a big hit, you tap X. It's weird. It's awkward. You get take a hit. But a lot of the times, your quarterback will just kind of, like, fall forward you can dive with l trigger and x so you have some options if you want to run with your quarterback that's what i like to do though and you can even get past the spy for like two yards if they spy somebody on the defensive line i mean i'll probably take a hit here because i'm trying to explain it but you can like if i'm at the two i'm in there before i get tackled so and once you're in the end zone it doesn't matter if you fumble so that's the first thing i like to do the second thing is then throw a slant right so if they're going to um you know, blitz their linebackers and get real aggressive because they think you're running it, that is where you want to then use, like, some type of slant pattern off of this. That's really the only time I recommend using slants. Slants used to be something that um, ran a lot, but you want to use quick slants, stuff like that, fit it in um, in this scenario. That's two plays I use. That's kind of like a run-pass option, right? It's kind of like the Eagles uh, back in the day, and we're just calling random 4-3s. Now, a couple other things I like to do inside the red zone is the Texas concept. So this is where I'll actually go into my playbook, medium, Texas, and the halfback angle route out of the backfield, especially if I'm at the eight or deeper. Um, I would call the play tight end angle. That's the single back deuce close. You've probably seen me run this 100 times. It's not technically a Texas from the halfback. It's from the tight end. So Travis Kelsey is going to go and then break back over the middle, high point throw. Who doesn't know that it's coming? But the actual real Texas is, you know, just this guy out of the backfield. It's kind of tough to use her. You want to throw it as soon as he cuts and you kind of want to be back a little bit. Like you don't want to get into a, you don't ever really want to throw into the back of the end zone um, unless you're high pointing or you have something specific. So you don't really want to throw to a halfback who can't jump, can't really get spectacular um out of there like if you throw that angle route which he's running into that guy that's why you want to throw it short because you don't want to get crushed um he's bumping into travis kelsey so let's get travis kelsey out of there because it's not letting him start his cut like the sooner he gets there you go like yeah you want him like that like that's the idea of texas that i like to run um from that area of the field so that route out of the backfield like i said you can also do it in shorter scenarios from the deuce close which just might as well show you. And even if you don't use this, you might say, well, Farles, everyone knows you're going to do this. You'll you'll see people do this, right? So Travis Kelsey, say we get to the six, the five, whatever. We want to throw a high point a couple yards in here. Wait for it to clear out. And Kelsey right there. See how that was a high point? He went up, got the catch animation. There was a defender in the area, um, but ultimately he didn't animate. And not many are going to match Travis Kelsey's size. You're not always going to get an animation. You're not always going to get an accurate throw. That's kind of what makes these high points a little bit risky. Um, and one thing I like to do. Now, I don't want to get too tactical. I don't want to break break down too much. But I would just put the half pack to that side. Because that's where the flow is going. But if Travis Kelsey does end up getting um, covered, you could swing it out and then maybe have a block. But I don't want to overdo it. But just the uh, 
the Kelsey on the high point cutting back. LB right there. Overthrow. That's life. You can also not high point it, but you're real like the good thing about high point is if you don't catch it, the goalpost is catching it. No one's catching it. Whereas if you don't high point it, you're probably gonna throw a touchdown, but you're you're way more likely to throw a pick. And that's generally where people use her. So it's a really dangerous area of the field to throw it. Um so what else is there? If that's the most dangerous area of the field to throw in, what else can we do? Well, that's where a uh, concept, screen pass, bubble screen, comes in handy. This PA bubble, you can find these. And the reason I know it's a good one is because it has two blockers out there instead of just one. A lot of screen passes really only have one blocker. Those aren't good. You want the one with two. Um, because there's three guys lined up over it, I don't think this is going to work, so I would not call this here. I would just simply call inside zone. And I would try and find the hole. As you can see, it was wide open. But because we called a random play, that's what happened. So let's go see what happens here. So now we only have one guy over there, although there's still another guy lined up over him. And the middle's pretty open, so I would call inside zone. But let's just humor you guys, and we'll do that. And that bubble did not work. So let's see if we do a better job aborting the play action by pressing R trigger. It's, it's a bit long of an animation. So... This specific bubble screen, not a great one. That's why you do want to test plays uh, ahead of time. That's man. So that's the danger of the bubble screen if three guys are lined up over there. Um, but because the middle of the field is such a dangerous thing, and, like, that's how it works, ideally, right? So that's ideally how it works. Now, you can throw a pick six with this. It is a little bit risky. Um, but when it works at its best, I just talked about middle of the field, super dangerous. Um, user there, lurk in. So how can you attack the widest part, the most open part of the field where people sometimes forget about down at the red zone? Well, the bubble screen is one way, and that's the play I would recommend calling. Um, in that scenario, something that gets the ball out to the boundary, gets you one-on-one, -on -one, hopefully you get the block. Now, the other thing you can do is run a sweep or a toss. Um... You can either run this from something like strong slot where you see there's no receivers on this side of the field or same thing with this toss right there. There's no receivers on that side or from the slot flex. There's no um, receivers on that side because you really don't want your receiver blocking to be the one-on-one -on -one decision whether or not you score. And as you can see, you want guys to slide in or you want them to go on the other side uh, if they like. If the defense was to say, like if they baseline but go back out there, then you don't really want to run it. Um, so those are some, some things you want to consider as to whether or not you're going to toss or not. But like I said, the middle of the field gets really bound. Um, there you go. Like that's that's what you want. Of course, you don't want to outrun your blockers. Um, so that's one other way you can get to the boundary. So I showed you running with the quarterback. That's the middle. Um, but slant, that's the outside. Then I showed you uh, the the. Texas route over the middle, but then I showed you the bubble screen. Then I just showed you the toss. So now I got to give you one more area of the field to attack. And that's going to be a play like a Trey style play. But you don't want Travis Kelsey there. You kind of want him here. Um, and you want him to get to the corner. So. A play like SE corner, like these are in almost every playbook. So you got to go through, find it. Now, these two routes that are crossing on his left, they should help pull somebody over. And once again, you want to find the exact depth. So that's just straight man. He was going to be open, um, but he ran a bit into the back of the end zone. So let's go get us to the eight. Let's try this from a little further out. See if we can get him to kind of cut. So the zone's there. We're going to high point. And that's just, this is one other area you haven't attacked, right? So you've attacked short middle, deep middle with a high point, uh, boundary, toss. You have not attacked this deep left corner. And if we can get a good throw with Mahomes, I know most of you guys are in mutt, so you're not necessarily using a, a QB with this level, you can get some good throws. Now, the other thing I really like about this play is you attack the deep left, but if for whatever reason they don't... Exp uh, it, it gets open. 
You might not, I mean, you, you always do want a high point. Like I said, you always want a high point. So. Because the risk of just throwing it low, like even against man, it's just too low. It's, yeah, it's working. Uh, but I do I do like those corners. Last piece is is uh, if they just forget about this guy out to the flat. Like That's another good way to get it in the boundary where you don't have to run the bubble screen. Because then on the bubble screen, you're locked to one route. Whereas at least if this, you you can go to Kelsey, but then you can, you can go to there. Or if nothing else works, you can go to Kelsey and see if you can get animation. That's kind of the animation you want to get. A lot of people got Jimmy Graham 6-7 from their Mutt Loyalty. That's pretty much how you can score in the red zone. So that's... Five plays, five concepts. It's in every playbook. Go through, dig around, find what you do. When you get down inside that 10, you got to change your mindset. You don't have the whole field to work with. Things change. It's its own little mini meta game of like, what am I going to do? What did I do the first drive? What did I do the next time? Why is Farrell sweating? I like this format of video. I'm going to tell him about it in the comments because he actually reads the comments and then he makes new videos based on what he reads in the comments. That's all I got. Until next time, Farrell's lock up. Stay hungry.